Hey guys, what's up? So, I am back. Uh, a couple people have informed me that I did not actually finish reading through this document, and that is true. Um, there were some random internet virus-related issues, <coughs> which hopefully have been dealt with. Um, we'll see. I'm 100 years old and don't know how to internet. So, uh, on with that. I am on page 39. Eighth cause of action, deceptive acts and misleading business practices, false advertising in violation of general business law 349 and 350 of the Consumer Protection Act. The defendants named here are uh, Dick, Asterios, Tab, and uh, Dick's company. So um, this, is, this is a curious charge. Just on its face, uh, there's some problems. Um, real quick, I can go through uh, deceptive... Deceptive acts and business practices. I actually have the New York Code pulled up because uh, I'm I'm very professional this time. So, <coughs> excuse me, what the hell? So, deceptive acts or practices in the conduct. This is a uh, section three forty nine. Deceptive deceptive acts or practices in the conduct conduct of any business. Jesus Christ trade or commerce, or in the furnishing of any service in this state are hereby declared unlawful. Well, that's helpful. Uh, section B is whenever the Attorney General shall believe from evidence uh, to him that any person, firm, corporation, blah, 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 are engaged in these acts, he may bring in action the name or on behalf of the people of the state of New York. Um, in any such action, it shall be a complete defense that the act or practice is, if it, or if in interstate commerce, would be subject to and complies with the rules and regulations of and the statutes administered by the Federal Trade Commission or any official department, division, commission, or agency of the United States, such as rules, regulations, or statutes interpreted by the Federal Trade Commission, blah, blah, blah. Nothing in this section shall apply to any television or radio broadcasting station or to any publisher or printer of a newspaper, magazine, or other form of printed adverti advertising who broadcasts, publishes, or prints the advertisement. Connection with any proposed proceeding under this section, the Attorney General is authorized this section shall apply to all deceptive acts or practices declared to be unlawful. And uh, that's, that's about it. There, there isn't really a declaration of what's unlawful or deceptive. There's some other sections, um, observant community, I'm not going to go through all of these. Most of these are related to, uh, let's see, resident, so we have observant consumer protection law, residential telephone equipment advertising, sale and warranty requirements, doubt it falls under there, voice over IP protocol, 911 dis 911 disclosure, yet yeah, not going to be there, additional civil penalty, penalty for consumer frauds against elderly persons, I mean Maddox isn't that old. Uh, energy Services Company, Consumer Bill of Rights, and Counterfeit Non-Functional Airbags. Uh, I mean, Maddox is a non-functional airbag, I guess, but I don't think that's what they're talking about. Uh, okay, Observant Consumer Protection Law is, um, is good. No person selling or exposing for sale any mezuzah or... To fill in, which, to the seller's knowledge, does not satisfy orthodox Hebrew ritual requirements, shall present by direct or implied oral or written statement that such mezuzah or teflon is kosher or meets orthodox Hebrew requirements. Um, Dick is clearly selling orthodox Jew material. So, I mean, if you'll notice, uh, there's nothing in the deceptive acts and practices um, that's specific that they can reference in this case. So they also reference section 350, which is false advertising. And um, I'll, I'll, I know this is boring because this is boring for me, so I can only assume that for you it's like killing yourself and not dying. Is that boring? Don't do that. Uh, so the term false advertising means advertising, including labeling of a commodity or of the kind, character, terms, or conditions of any employment opportunity if such advertising is misleading in a material respect. In determining whether any advertising is misleading, there should be taken into account, among other things, not only representation made by statement, word, design, device, sound, or any combination thereof, but also the extent to which the advertising fails to reveal facts material in light of such representations with respect to the commodity or employment. Okay. 
let's go ahead. Uh, let me give you guys a, a legal tip when you're writing a complaint. So earlier we had the statement of facts, right? Um, and the statement of facts is where you establish all of the facts that are necessary to support your causes of action. Uh, it's, it's Maddox's chance to tell the story in the best way possible for him. Rem <laughs> remember that this is his chance to tell the story in the best way possible. When you read through this shit show, this is the best possible showing he could come up with. So keep that in mind. When you get to your cause of action section, that's your chance to relate specific facts into a cause of action. You tell how something you said earlier is actually illegal and has caused damage. So this cause of action, deceptive acts and misleading business practices, false advertising in violation of general business law. 178, they repeat, replete, and incorporate by reference everything else before this. Yes, 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 we get it. 179, as set forth more fully above, did they, did they set it forth? Defendants have engaged in a ruthless quest to harass, threaten, defame, and embarrass plaintiffs. Did they, did you establish anywhere that the defendants have done any of this? I don't think so. I think you've accused the defendants fans of doing some of this stuff, and some of that might have merit. Might. I, I, I mean, people called you a shithead on the internet, you stupid shithead. Section 180. Defendants have created numerous false harassment campaigns. What's a false harassment campaign? <laughs> so they, they were going to create a harassment campaign, but instead it was a false one, so they didn't really harass us and directed its followers uh it's like is it what's it's because you have multiple defendants and you have multiple harassment campaigns that be their followers i guess to disrupt every aspect of plaintiff's lives attack them you haven't you haven't you didn't provide any evidence of any of that you've never provided a goddamn statement that where where dick or anyone else says hey you group of assholes on the internet, go bother Maddox and, and his retarded girlfriend. Uh, that would maybe be an evidence of guilt, but you haven't done it. And it should be easy because apparently these campaigns are super pervasive. Attack them. Find private information to sue against them. I assume he means use. But again, proofread your god. Oh, wait a minute! Line 180, the first word is defendants apostrophe. What the fuck do you have an apostrophe there for? <laughs> Information to sue against them. I'm not even gonna give them the benefit of the doubt anymore. And provide incentive incentives for their fans of to their fans there too. What incentive? What incentive? An incentive is money or something of value or a legal right. You have to give something for there to be an incentive. This would be easy if there were some sort of campaign that you could show had an incentive. That'd be even easier because purportedly there'd be some place where I could go as a fan of the show and find the fucking incentive that I'm supposed to get for digging up dirt on your dumbass. Why haven't you provided any of it? Which has included threatening rape. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I'm going to read this, uh, sorry, I, I keep breaking in the middle of the sentence because it's so stupid, but I'm going to go through this sentence and we'll see if it makes sense in English. Defendants have created numerous false harassment campaigns, comma, and directed its followers, comma, to disrupt every aspect of plaintiff's lives, apostrophe, in plaintiff's, oh, it's right that time, good job, uh, comma, attack them, comma, find private information to sue against them, comma, and provide incentives to their fans there too which has included, comma, threatening rape, comma, and death, comma, against plaintiff Jane Doe's, comma, on her social media accounts. What has included? Was that the, are you saying the false harassment campaigns? There's so many goddamn commas, this doesn't even make sense. 181. Defendant's campaign and incite, campaign, campaigns and incitement has not, 
Defendant's campaigns, comma, and incitement, comma, has not stopped, comma. What the fuck language are you speaking? And they continue to generate substantial income from their encouragement to stalk. There's n no one has... I read the stalking statute in the previous video. You don't have a stalking crime. You can't just say some... Defame, threaten, threaten what? Incite? Their encouragement to incite? In Who are, are they encouraging you? Harass plaintiffs apostrophe in their personal and private lives. For fuck's sake. Thousands of harassing, threatening, and defaming posts and tweets have been sent by defendants and their followers. Thousands. Thousands. Why haven't you provided, like, any of them? You've got a couple up top that aren't threatening. They're not... Th they might be harassing. None of them from the defendants. Thousands? Really? Really thousands? That'd be great. You should just provide... If I'm writing a complaint like this, and I'm alleging thousands of acts... I would screen capture every goddamn one of them and put them in just stacks and pages and pages of exhibits. You don't want to put them in line in your complaint because then your complaint gets really long and bogged down, but you put just pages and pages of exhibits to attach to it and show the judge just how much has been done, you dummy. Ugh. But you can't because there haven't been thousands because you're lying to the judge. And by the way, I've been in courtrooms where, where attorneys have lied to judges. It doesn't go well. It really doesn't go well. Like when you claim that there's a, there's a billboard that's been raised and that's in violation of New York state law, you should check and see whether the billboard has been raised and if it's been raised in New York. Because if it hasn't, you're misleading the judge on a material fact. And if the defense not following my advice, but the advice of their own attorney, I would assume, were to go ahead and point out the fact that you're raising a fake billboard that was never erected in a state outside of New York, and you're trying to incorporate that into some sort of violation of New York law, and that you didn't include the material facts that it was never fucking raised and it wasn't in New York even if it had been raised, they're going to be really pissed off when they find out that you just left out those material facts. Defendants apostrophe, fucking hell. Their agents, employees, and owners have disrupted every aspect of plaintiff's lives. You've said this. Causing extreme mental anguish. That should go with your other claims, not here. And unfathomable emotional distress. Further, comma, it has erupted their professional lives, comma, decimated plaintiff George's business. No, I think George decimated. You did more than decimate it. If they had only decimated your business, <laughs> you'd be in good shape, buddy. But you crushed your own business. And caused a great strain on the plaintiff's personal relationship. Well... That, I mean, that and your your idiocy, your arrogance, and all sorts of... Your, maybe your enigma is causing the great strain on, on your relationship. 184. Defendant's action towards plaintiffs have occurred within the state of New York. Fucking where? Where? They're not in New York. Maybe Asterios is in New York. But when when you when you put something on Facebook or you tweet it out... Like, where's the locus of the tweet? Where's the locus of the Facebook point post? Is it in New York? Is it where you're posting from? Is it where the reception of it is? I mean, uh, you got to remember that the law is like 10,000 years behind technology, dummy. And, and the thing is, like, let's say, for example, that we determine uh, the locus is in New York. Okay, well, Dick isn't in New York. So that's going to be real fucking hard to prove if the locus is where the tweet originates. So then you've only got Asterios, but you've named Dick and Tab and Dick's company in this section. So if you're saying this happened in New York and you're saying that based on the, the basis of where the tweet or Facebook post was fucking drafted, then no. Uh, you've only got one of the plaintiffs 
in New York doing this. And you have to prove that he's in New York with the defamatory tweets. But last I checked, Asterios travels around a lot. A lot of times he's in L.A. on the show. So you have to track down where he was when he made the post. Better hope he had location turned on. Now let's assume the opposite, that the locus is where the, the infraction was received, I guess, where you received the harassment, which seems like a better argument to me because if I'm sending you something from China, but you're receiving it here, the harassment occurs here, not in China. Like what, you're not in China, so how could I harass you in China, right? It's probably where you are, but you're not in New York. Like, you're receiving this in L.A. where you live and do the vast majority of your business, probably all of your business. Like, maybe some of your book deal was done in New York. I don't know. And I'm really sorry, Simon & Schuster, that you guys got roped into a contract with someone who couldn't fucking finish a book in, like, 25 years and just handed you a bunch of old stuff. I, I, I phew, That was a bad choice. I hope you didn't pay a big advance. 185. The material deceptive acts and misleading business practices. What misleading business practice? Where has Dick misled any of his consumers? Ever. Ever. What was deceptive about his, his show or advertisements in any way? Are you alleging that the Road Rage show didn't occur and that he was taking money from people? By the way, that was L.A., that was not New York. He's, he's had a couple others, none of them, I don't think, in New York City. And if he did, you'd think you'd post one of those flyers. But you'd have to say that he was misleading people into the road rage. But he, he wasn't. They're directed at a consumer. At a consumer which caused plaintiff's actual harm. What consumer were they directed at? And why is there an apostrophe on defendants? As such... Defendant's fucking apostrophe engaged in fraudulent and deceptive acts that were directed at consumers. The acts were misleading in a material way. You just said this. You just said it. The acts and conduct... The acts and conduct of defendants apostrophe plainly violate the consumer protection laws of New York. What consumer? You're not a New York consumer. You can't even raise this issue. The attorney general would have to bring it on behalf of the state of New York under the statute. You fucking dummy. You're not a consumer in New York. You don't have a claim. Plaintiffs are entitled to injunctive relief of what? You haven't been deceived by his business practices, and if you had, you're in L.A. For the defendants willfully and knowingly committed deceptive acts and unlawful practices. Which ones? Entitling plaintiffs to treble damages of their actual reward. What? <laughs> you're asking for $60 million. Jesus Christ, give me just a second. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> he requests $20 million and that said award be tripled. Statutory attorney fees. Where's, hold on a minute. Uh, 349. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, sure, sure. If the court finds a defendant willfully or knowingly violated the section, the court may award reasonable attorney's fees to a prevailing plaintiff. Okay, good job. You can ask for attorney's fees. Um, let's see. I mean, whew. This is a thin case, buddy, because... So, you, you had an entire section of a cause of action in your complaint to link facts, any facts, to the elements of, a, of the cause of action, which require you to show some deceptive act or practice, but you haven't. Like, you, you, you're alleging harassment. 
Not a deceptive act. You're alleging harassment. Like, that's, that's what you put in your complaint. That's what you put in your cause of action. Uh, okay. Ninth cause of action. And I apologize. I gotta, I gotta step away a second. I apologize. I have to pretend to be a person tonight. So, uh, let's see. Ninth cause of action. Negligent hiring and or retention against defendants Weber Shandwick and Joshua Kaufman. So yes, the, the attorney for Weber Shandwick is in, involved in hiring and retention of Asterios, presumably. So Weber Shandwick knew or should have known that defendants Coconos, of defendant Coconos' propensity for conduct which caused injury to plaintiffs. Why do you have an apostrophe on plaintiffs? As set forth in full above. Weber Shanwick and Joshua Kaufman were provided with a detailed account of Defendant Kokonos' conduct in a series of emails, which included specific websites, photographs, posts, and other vile and reprehensible actions and things created or directed by Defendant Kokonos from Weber Shanwick's offices. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, none of what Asterios did was illegal. Making fun of you isn't illegal. <sighs> Joshua Kaufman, the general counsel for Weber Shanwick, responded to these emails and ind indicated that Weber Shanwick took these matters seriously, and they fucking disagree with you. <laughs> they d they took it seriously by responding to you in the first place. You insane man. Oh my God! Weber Shanwick was made aware that during Defendant Kokonos's employment, there were problems with Defendant Kokonos, which indicated that he was unfit. How? What? What's? What about him making fun of you makes him unfit to copyright for Weber Shanwick, and had a propensity to commit injury to plaintiffs? What injury? He hasn't injured you, and did in fact commit injuries to plaintiffs. Period. Apostrophe. For fuck's sake. Why? What third grade class wrote this complaint for you? No, sorry, third graders. They know where to put apostrophes. As demonstrated above, Weber Shanwick has specific policies and is vocal as to its stance on social media and online harassment. Great. Great. That's fantastic for them. Under the circumstances, Weber Shanwick and Joshua Kaufman had a duty to initiate an investigation. How do you know they didn't? as they were clearly put on notice that he was engaging in the foregoing harassment campaigns and appalling conduct that was causing substantial injuries to plaintiffs. One, you still haven't shown an injury. Like, maybe you should have attached a doctor bill or something for all of your mental health issues which stem from this, or an opinion letter from a professional, and which was ongoing and threatening serious criminal acts. What criminal act? What criminal act, criminal conversion that you accused other people of? And violence such as rape and death. N did Asterios threaten rape and death of anyone? Oh my god. What If he did, where is it? However, Weber Shanwick failed to take the requisite act. They did, there is no requisite action. Or, to, or protect the plaintiff's privacy. Your privacy, what privacy did he breach? He didn't breach your privacy. You don't even have a right to... You haven't even alleged a breach of privacy. You've said that everything they've said about you is a lie. If they breached your privacy and posted private information, it's either private information or it's a lie. If it's a lie, they didn't breach your privacy. Pick a theory, Maddox. Instead, Weber Shanwick effectively condoned defendant Kokonos' conduct. I mean, they, refusing to take action isn't an effective condemnation. It's just refusing to take action because they disagree with your assessment and immediately told him about the complaints. Well, yeah, I would fucking hope that an employee would be informed by the general counsel that some jackass on the internet is complaining about him and that they're looking at it. That's indicative of an investigation, dumbass. 
Whereupon Defendant Coconos posted about it. <laughs> Good job, Mysterios. And promised to exact ruthless revenge. What ruthless revenge did he exact? Like, what's ruthless revenge anyway? You know, at some points in our history, ruthless revenge was... Um, if there was a dissident in a town, you'd kill the entire town. Maybe not the dissident, though. Like, to let him suffer and wallow in it. What ruthless revenge did Asterios come up with? He's Greek. I'm sure you can find good examples of Greek ruthless revenge in history. Uh, which he did. Which he did. How did he exact ruthless revenge? You said he did. What did he do? He recorded an album that charted on Billboard, dummy. That's not even revenge. Recently, on October 24th, 2017, Defendant Kokonos sent a tweet indicating that he had been provided with said emails by Re Weber Shanwick and that they had indicated to him that they were sent to Weber Shanwick by plaintiff Uzuzian posing as a reporter. Hey, maybe you shouldn't lie about being a reporter. <laughs> Chris, George pulled this same shit on me. He pretended to be a reporter, emailed my employer, and tried to get me fired. Holy shit. They caught on to you. Maybe provide those fucking press, press, <laughs> provide the press credentials when they ask you for, when you claim to be a member of the press and you demand a statement from an employer, provide the press credentials. But what's interesting is that you're alleging that you and Jess, the plaintiffs, made, made Weber Shandwick aware. Are you admitting to falsifying claims about being members of the press? We're, are you admitting to defrauding Weber Shanwick in some way? Hmm. That's interesting. Good job, Maddox. Solid move as always. You're very good at making decisions. As such, plaintiffs sustained substantial injuries and damages as a proximate result of Weber Shanwick's inaction, acquiescence, and negligence. Negligence? How? How? Uh, actually, Weber Shanwick owes you $20 million, too. There you go. Good job. Tenth cause of action, negligent supervision. Weber Shanwick and Joshua Kaufman. Is Joshua Kaufman Asterios' employer? Is he his direct supervisor? Plaintiffs repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As set forth more fully above, Mr. Kaufman knew or should have known of Defendant Kokonos' propensity for the conduct which caused the injury to the plaintiffs. Okay. Is he in charge of Mr. Kokonos' hiring or firing? No. Prob I mean, probably not. I don't think uh, Asterios works in the legal department. Is Joshua Kaufman even senior legal counsel? Does he have hiring and firing authority? Um, the HR department... I mean, I assume Weber Shanwick runs through an HR department if they have in-house counsel. Mr. Kaufman's responsibilities, including oversight of Weber Shanwick's governance and legal issues. Are you sure those are his responsibilities? And in taking it upon himself to take plaintiff's complaint against defendant Kokonos. I thought you said he didn't... I mean, did he take them seriously, though? Permits an inference. Permits an inference? <laughs> so you... This is a complaint, Maddox. You're not alleging inferences. You have to allege fact. Fact. Fact, 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 fact. I mentioned in the previous video, uh, Bell Technologies... Uh, where you can't just allege a conspiracy. You have to provide dates and times or documents. You have to provide anything to the court that's a fact. It's a fact. You're providing a fucking inference that his duties encompass the supervision and conduct of defendant Kokonos. Why would, a, why would legal counsel of a company the size of Weber Shanwick have anything involving the supervision and conduct of Kokonos? and other senior copywriters. The copywriting department, the, the executive vice president of copywriting would probably have supervision and uh, hiring duties over Kokonos. Not fucking Joshua Kaufman, random legal counsel. You. Mr. Kaufman therefore had a sufficient relationship with defendant Kokonos. Has he even met him? Has he even met him? I, I, okay. Okay, Weber Shandwick. Uh, let me see if I can find out how many employees Weber Shandwick has. This is a $500 million company with 78 offices worldwide. 
Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Their digital marketing staff numbers 300 as of 2011. Has Joshua Kaufman ever met Asterios Kokonos? I, I, maybe. Maybe during his research. Prior to your dumb complaints, has he? I doubt it. I doubt it, buddy. Okay. Uh, negligence. Just general negligence against Weber Shanwick. Although Weber Shanwick may not have owed plaintiffs an original duty. You think? Why do you have an apostrophe on every plaintiff's? Mr. Kaufman undertook to perform an act for the plaintiff's benefit. Did he? You're claiming he didn't. You said he didn't do the investigation. And now you're saying he did. And therefore the act he performed must have been performed with due care. But did he perform it? If he did perform it, how do you know it wasn't performed with due care? It clearly was not. Based on fucking what? He didn't fire him? How do you know he wasn't disciplined? How do you know he wasn't written up? You idiot. You don't know any of this. You can't know any of this. Have you called and asked for a follow-up? And if you did, did you provide your fake press credentials then? 205. Here, the intervening intentional acts of Defendant Kokonos was itself the foreseeable harm as to plaintiff which shaped a duty. If you have an interfe if you have an intervening act that removes the proximate cause of the fucking defendant. Okay. I'm sorry, we're getting way off in the legal woods here. Proximate cause is the cause that leads to an injury. Like ultimately there's there's cause like when I wave my hand, there's the butterfly effect and that could cause a monsoon somewhere, but that's not the proximate cause of anything. Uh, if I if I get in a car and drive somewhere, I may cause someone to be late to their job, but it's not a proximate cause, just that I happened to be in front of them at a red light and, and they didn't get through the light when I did, and so then they were two minutes late. That's not the proximate cause of them being late. That's, that's an incidental uh, event that did cause it in some way, but it's not proximate to, to what happened. So here... They're alleging that Weber Shanwick and Joshua Kaufman's negligence is the cause of action against, uh, you know, uh, for, for the damage done to, to uh, Maddox. But when you say that the intervening intentional acts of Kokonos were foreseeable harm, like the intervening acts of Kokonos would then negate the proximate cause of Weber Shanwick. You're undermining your own argument because... I'm guessing your your lawyer your lawyer must not have written this. You don't have any money, do you? He must not have written this. You must have written something retarded. Handed it over to the lawyer and said, "Please just file this in New York because I don't have any money and if we win, I'll give you something." Th that has to be it. Because there's no way you paid someone to write this. It's wrong. And your attorney, isn't he a 20-year attorney? He would know that this is wrong. I can't believe he signed it. There's no way he wrote it. There's no way. Mr. Kaufman took it upon himself to enter plaintiff's complaints, answer plaintiff's complaints relative to Kokonos, and or inform Kokonos of said complaints, and or to keep his identity private, and or investigate Kokonos. Well, if he did that, then he's not negligent. He just disagrees with you. Mr. Kaufman failed to keep plaintiff's identity private. He doesn't have a duty to keep your identity private. If someone sends a complaint in, they may have a duty to disclose to the copywriter who the complaint is. Maybe you should pull out the employee handbook and find out how they handle complaints. Did you even request one? Did you even ask? I doubt it. When you were lying about press credentials, did you ask? Wait a minute. Didn't Heather, didn't Heather do this? Not you? So how did they disclose that it was you? Maybe Asterios inferred that it was you because you're a fucking vindictive bat. 
bastard, bitch. I don't even know. You're pansy. Jesus Christ, grow some stones, Maddox. You talk about your big balls all the time. You got none. He informed Coconos immediately about the complaints. Yes, I fucking hope he would. In any corporation, when a complaint is leveled against an employee, to cover the ass of the corporation, they have to tell you where the complaint is coming from. Or to prevent further injury to plaintiffs. Period. Apostrophe. Instead, Mr. Kaufman's actions or inactions, which one is it? Did he act or not? Made everything substantially worse for plaintiffs. You didn't put an apostrophe there. That's, I think that's the first one. How did you get it right suddenly? And effectively provided Kokonos with the unhindered ability to retaliate. Mm -hmm. And continue his harassment and vitriol, which he did. Vitriol isn't illegal and harassment's a legal conclusion and you haven't pointed to any facts which lead to the conclusion of harassment. You alleged facts earlier. Cite to your own paragraph and show which... If you just included all the screen caps as exhibits, you could just put a parenthesis, exhibit D. As such, Weber Shanwick and Mr. Kaufman failed to guard against Kokonos' conduct towards plaintiff's apostrophe and therefore are not relieved of liability for their negligence. They don't have to be relieved of liability. They don't have liability for negligence. They don't owe a duty. Duty, the four elements of negligence. Duty, harm, or no, duty, sorry, breach, harm resulting from breach of duty, redressability by the court. The court has to be able to provide redress of grievances to the plaintiff for the breach of duty which caused harm. You haven't established duty. You said he didn't do an investigation, then you said he did, and that the investigation created a duty. Wrong. An investigation doesn't by itself create duty. He made no material promises to you about the results of said investigation. He just said we take it seriously and we're gonna we're gonna look into it. And then you said he didn't. And then you said he did. You're fucking bad at this. As such, Weber, Shamwick, and Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Therefore, they breached a duty owed to plaintiffs. What breach? And that breach was approximate cause of injury. How is their breach approximate cause of injury? Because it's... Even if we take your argument, even if we take your argument, their negligence still requires an intervening act that they're not providing by Asterios to cause harm to you. Asterios has to intervene in the chain of events for harm to come. Because if Asterios doesn't do anything, then Weber Shanwitz's uh, action or inaction results in nothing to you. If they don't do anything, nothing happens. Asterios has to make a further intervening act. Your argument is self-defeating. Quest $20 million. Yes. There you go. Jesus Christ. I'll be, uh, I'll be right back one more time. All right. All right, I'm back. Twelfth cause of action. Negligent infliction of emotional distress. <sighs> okay. So, infliction of emotional distress is, is, uh, it's a tough cause of action in general. Um, not all states recognize a negligent infliction of emotional distress. Uh, in my state, I've, I'm not sure if they've adopted it yet, but um, some states do. Sorry, New York is one of them. Um, but let me, uh, let, me, let me read. This is a quote from a case. It doesn't really matter. Sheila versus Povich. Moreover, a cause of action for either intentional or negligent infliction of emotional distress must be supported by allegations of conduct by the defendants, quote, so outrageous in character and so extreme in degree as to go beyond all possible bounds of decency and to be regarded as atrocious and utterly intolerable in a civilized community. Where has Asterios done anything close which would 
then by extension implicate Weber Shandwick. You haven't posted anything from Asterios that rises anywhere near infliction of emotional distress, negligent or intentional. But let's see what you say. Let's see if by some miracle, by the 12th cause of action, you figured out how to link a fucking fact to a crime or an illegal act. Sorry, not a crime, but an act that gives rise to civil liability. Let's see if you figured this out yet after 211 paragraphs. I know where my money is. As set forth more fully above, you keep saying that doesn't make it true. Weber Shanwick and Joshua Kaufman breached a duty owed to plaintiffs apostrophe which unreasonably endangered plaintiffs physical safety or caused plaintiffs apostrophe comma to fear for their own safety. You don't need an apostrophe there and you don't need a comma. What is wrong with you? Okay. What duty? What duty does Weber Shanwick owe to you? Do you have a contract with them? Nope. Contained in the emails sent to Mr. Kaufman, there... Those emails are allegations. They're your side of the story. They're not fact. They're not fact. They're... They're evidence. They might have probative value. They may help to establish a fact. I would argue they don't. But even so, they're not the truth. They're not ironclad. They can disagree with you. Among other vile things were threats of rape and death. From Asterios? Did Asterios threaten rape and death? And by the way, threatening death against someone isn't a thing you have to threaten to cause the death like you threaten to kill threatening to you will die well yes you will so will i an appalling racism again from asterios he's like the fuzziest liberal i've ever met oh my god and his i haven't really met him i guess online uh, he's so decidedly anti-racist. It offends his very nature, like to a point where it's kind of irritating. Because he has to make such a show about it. But okay. So sure, this person with a giant track record of not being racist is alleged to have committed some appalling racism, but fucking where? Where? This should be easy. Which were either made or encouraged. Either. Either made. Where? You didn't include it. Or encouraged. You didn't include that. And his followers. His followers can make and encourage these things all they want. You're not suing them. Some of which use their real names. Real names aren't private. They're not private. Real names... If I call you George or, or I, I can't even use your real name because it's so fucking hard to pronounce. But if I could and I used it, that's not wrong. It's not wrong. If I give out your address, that's one thing. Even though that's public, it's harder to get to. But a name is just, it's your name. It's your name. You're not protected. We're not the government. Uh, people can reveal your name all day, even if you use a pen name, George. And led to their prompt identification. We know who you are. Good. It doesn't matter. Name. Never mind. Weber Shanwick could have immediately put a stop to this vitriol and hate, but chose not to. One, how do you know they chose not to? Two, how could they have put a stop to it? Firing him wouldn't have put a stop to the vitriol and hate. It likely, if I had to guess, would have increased the vitriol and hate. And by the way, 
vitriol and hate is not illegal. You should allege something illegal, like harassment even, or defamation. You haven't shown those, but at least allege them. But they don't have a duty to put a stop to vitriol and hate. I have vitriol and hate for you because you've been such a dumbass over the past year. And a half, year and a half, two years, I don't even know. You became a dumbass in the middle of your former podcast. As such, plaintiff sustained, plaintiff's apostrophe sustained substantial financial injuries. You're injuring me with your abuse of, hypo, of apostrophes and severe mental anguish. Yeah, by the way, your financial injuries don't matter in uh, an emotional distress claim. Omo, only the mental anguish and only mental anguish that you can show. So you have to have economic loss from your mental anguish. You still produce your podcast and the mental anguish you suffer isn't the cause of the loss of business, at least according to you. You're alleging that the loss of business is due to Dick's harassment campaign, even though it's due to your dumbass being a moron. Mm. Approximately caused by defendant Weber, Shanwick, and Kaufman. How the fuck did they cause anything? In particular, oh good, this will help. Plaintiff Jane Doe has endured an unimaginable, a, an unimaginable amount of strain and stress. Unimaginable. Mind you, people's children are burned alive in front of them in Middle East, in some Middle Eastern countries. But her stress from being made fun of on Twitter is unimaginable unimaginable as a result of the foregoing resulting in constant fear anxiety ptsd is she diagnosed depression and that at any moment she may be raped by who who is going to rape her or someone may break into her house hack her accounts or kill her you have had no credible death threats. And if you have, have you gone to the police? Have you? Have you gone to the police, Maddox? Has Jess? I know, I seem to recall that Jess has, uh, she has a restraining order against her for doing this, doesn't she? For stalking and harassing someone. That's interesting. If this behavior is so appalling to her, why is she the one with the restraining order? It seems like she might be a danger to someone else. Hmm. Okay. Thirteenth cause of action. Negligent failure to warn against Patreon and Jordan Cope. Okay. Okay. Who's Jordan Cope? Uh, let me see. Let me Google Jordan Cope Patreon and see what comes up. Jordan Cope is pledging to 24 creators on Patreon. Oh, look at this guy. He's a creator talent lead. Uh, creator relations talent lead. Customer service, buddy. Customer service. You're suing a phone rep. God, you're awful. At least sue him as agent of Patreon. Like, uh, try and establish an agency relationship. You're suing an individual guy. Patreon boasts about the amount of money its creators generate. It has a top 50 list on its site, which indicates how much its creators are generating on a month-to-month -month basis. Defendant Herrera is one of Patreon's top earners. <laughs> Bet that makes you a little salty, doesn't it, you fucking pussy? <laughs> Having grossed well over 250000 since he began using the platform. Good job. Good job, Dick. Defendant Coconos has also generated a significant amount of income on Patreon in excess of 25000 Good, Good job, Mysterios. There are three different fees on Patreon. Patreon takes 5% from any money generated by the creator using the platform. Payment processing fees. Representing the cost of moving funds from the creator's patrons to the creator balance, such as the amount of payment processors, such as PayPal charges for each payment process. And three, payout fees. 
Charge for moving funds from the creator balance to the creator's bank or PayPal account. That sounds like a racket. Under a conservative estimate, estimate Patreon generated roughly 50000 from the activities of defendants Herrera and Coconos on their platform over the past year. Looks like uh, creating an open platform where literally anyone can sign up has been a good move for Patreon. Good job. Plaintiff Uzu... Plaintiff Maddox. Exchange multiple emails with Jordan Cope of Patreon. Emails don't uh, create liability. Automatically. I hope you show it. Mr. Cope's position with Patreon is creative, creator relations lead, which is a position whereby Mr. Cope is tasked with assisting creators, such as George. In the emails provided to Mr. Cope, Plaintiff George gave Mr. Cope numerous examples and information about how third parties were targeting and harassing Plaintiff Jane Doe through defendant's Patreon platform. Through defendant Patreon's platform and threatening rape and death. Wait, so they were doing this through Patreon? Does Jane Doe have a Patreon that they were then going through to threaten rape and death? Like they were going on her Patreon page and threatening rape and death? This is you just alleged. I mean, maybe you didn't carefully read your your uh, document. Ah, damn it, I'll be back. So, just in case you don't know, I realized that when I pause the video and walk away, I can walk away for 10, 20 minutes. Uh, but for you, it's only like you know, an, an instant, but I still will excuse myself and, and apologize for doing so, even though it's no inconvenience to you, only to me, but, uh, maybe I'm apologizing to me. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you just accused them of using Patreon's platform to threaten rape and death, but did they? It, again, does, the, fuck it, let me look. I have the internet at my fingertips, and I'm sure... <laughs> Eventually, uh, metal, metal Jesus, <laughs> metal, metal Jesus rocks is creating awesome gaming. Uh, there's, there's no metal Jess on, on Patreon. Um, so I don't know, I, or I can't find her just by looking for metal Jess, which is her pseudonym everywhere else. I don't even know her real name. So again, Maddox, uh, Dick and Asterios have done a shit job of disclosing her private details because I don't know what they are. I know her pseudonym is Metal Jess and, and she's some sort of model. Um, I guess. Okay. Whatever. Uh, yeah, but she doesn't seem to have a Patreon, so they can't use Patreon's platform to threaten rape and death unless they're doing it on yours, I guess. Again, was Asterios doing it? Seems like you could provide examples, especially if it's on your fucking Patreon page. Further, in these emails. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. A little bit more. Very professional. Further, in these emails. Plaintiff George thoroughly explains to Mr. Cope, through numerous example... How defendants Herrera and Coconos were using the Patreon platform to target, harass, intimidate, and threaten plaintiff of and then plaintiff Jane Doe, and to encourage their fans to do the same, even offering incentives and bonus contents. No! No, no, no! You don't get to just lie! Offering incentives and bonus contents to their fans for harassing and targeting plaintiff's apostrophe. They've never targeted plaintiff's apostrophe or offered incentives for targeting plaintiff's apostrophe. The incentives on Patreon come from money, as you know. There are tiers of donating, and each tier provides you with access to more and more content. Take, for example, me. I'm a $20 Patreon to Dick Masterson, which provides me access to the highest level of content he provides. I did not have to dox you or Metal Jess to get access to anything, ever. I was never offered to. You need money. Cash money. This is not a barter community where information is, is somehow worth dollars. I have to provide money to Dick to get access to his content. Or for providing private information of plaintiff's physician or his friends, family, or business associates. There isn't a method on Patreon. There is not a method to substitute a dollar contribution 
for uh, for information. I can't email Dick and get m access to Patreon. I have to provide money. It's a very uh, straightforward platform. Plaintiff George provided Mr. Cope with numer exam uh, numerous examples of third parties targeting Plaintiff Jane Doe, threatening rape and disclosing her private information. What? Her name is not private information. Did they provide her address? Her workplace? I mean, I'm pretty sure she's uh, comically unemployed, like uh, a convention model, right? Like that's, that's unemployed with a hobby. Did they, did they even provide that? Did they provide her like walk route or her jog route? Like what private information did they give other than her name? If they even gave her name. And if they did, I didn't see it. I still don't know her stupid name. Using her photograph and targeting her with racist death threats. Who threatened to kill her? And why didn't you go to the police? That's their fucking job. That she was being stalked and harassed. Oh, did you go to the police on that? Those are crimes in the state of California. Those are federal crimes if done online, multi-state. You can go to the cops. That's their job to protect you ostensibly, right? Did you? Did you once do it? If you're alleging fear, I hope you have a police incident report. If you don't have a police incident report, which I would assume you would attach to this document, if you did, and I would hope it'd be from New York since you're suing in New York, you fucking dummy. Defendants Herrera and Coconos, another Patreon user, were colluding with each other on the platform. On the platform! On Patreon, Coconos and Dick were colluding with each other and releasing podcasts and songs to belittle and humiliate plaintiff Jane Doe and encouraging their fans to harass and stalk her. By the way, you can release a song to humiliate and belittle someone. I don't know that they even did this, but if they did, you can do that. You can do that. You can humiliate and belittle people all the time. What you can't do is lie about them in a malicious fashion aimed to cause them damage. But you can belittle and humiliate people. You are a small man, George. You're a small, balding, ugly man who couldn't pass a fucking grad test that everybody else who's a math major in Utah passed. You couldn't do it. You weren't good enough, you small little thing who fancies himself an intellectual. You couldn't pass a basic fucking test to get a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree. Not even an advanced degree. You couldn't do it. You are a small man. I have belittled you by video. You don't have a cause of action against me in New York or California or Minnesota or any other state because I can offer an opinion about you that is belittling. You're, you're fucking little. Be belittled. It's hard to belittle you. You used to be fat. It would have been really hard to belittle you, you fat fucking bastard. Encouraging their fans to harass and stalk her. Where? You could have provided it and you didn't provide a single an example. Not one of them encouraging anything. This should be easy. Each of them has thousands of fans and they have one primary method to communicate with them which is a podcast posts on facebook reddit patreon or twitter and you can't provide one not one plaintiff george exchanged said emails with cope over the course of several months cope's reaction was usually that patreon took these matters seriously they do remember the dummy on your network whose patreon was removed like 15 times because he actually doxed and harassed people the guy on your network who actually used racial slurs who actually revealed private information about people who actually posted pictures of people private the private pictures of people on his show the person who actually encouraged his fans to call and threaten uh, a certain fan of dicks, that guy on your network, 
that guy actually did it and actually had his Patreon removed because Patreon actually takes these complaints seriously. They just disagree with you because your claim has no merit, you fucking vagina. He was sorry to hear about it. Yes, that's a standard customer service response. And that this information would be passed on to Patreon's trust and safety team. So you're saying, did he not do that? Because if you're saying that Patreon's trust and safety team took a look at it, reviewed it, and disagreed with you, it means they did their due diligence, they just disagree. That doesn't give you a cause of action, you fucking idiot. Mr. Cope also indicated to Plaintiff George that he would be the point of contact at Patreon for these complaints and issues, and he would liaise with the team to get back to you with their thoughts. Okay, are you claiming he didn't? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Cope stated that all of the information provided to Plaintiff George relative to the foregoing had been forwarded to Patreon's trust and safety team and that he would left, let George know when there was news or movement. Such news or resolution was not forthcoming. Then there wasn't news or movement. Mr. Cope and Patreon continued to delay and took no action against defendant Herrera or Coconos, so the harassment and threats against both plaintiffs continued and got worse. Hey, here's an idea. Maybe they determined that Dick and Asterios didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. And if you provided them the same evidence you're providing to the court, and if you provided Patreon stronger evidence than the court, then you are really fucking dumb. But if you provided the same evidence that you've provided the court, they had no cause to, to do anything. To actually shut down Dick's channel might expose them to liability for breaching their own contract. They have terms of service, and they have decided that Dick and Asterios have abided by them. Unlike the dumb shit on your network, who can't abide by them because he's some sort of serial moron. Mr. Cope stated that all the information... Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I already read that. Plaintiff George also has a Patreon account with like eight people on it. Oh, you didn't say that. Sorry. Was never warned by Patreon about how third parties targeted victims and other creators through Patreon's platform. What? Incentivizing and charging money to fans to stalk, harass, and threaten. Okay, are you alleging now that Dick charged money to his fans to stalk and harass you? Why, when we could do it for free? Why would I pay Dick to stalk and harass you, you dummy? Like the plaintiff's apostrophe herein. What, do the plaintiffs own the herein? Do you know how to use an apostrophe, Maddox? Because I think more and more as I read this that you wrote it and not an attorney. But if your attorney wrote it, did he have a stroke first? in an attempt to destroy their personal and professional lives. Further, Patreon never warned Plaintiff George that it applied different criteria to its creators and treated them differently. Citation fucking needed. Did they ever provide different criteria to their creators and treat them differently? Based upon how financially successful the creator is. You haven't established that in your giant list of boring facts. That was your opportunity to show that Patreon treated them differently. And you could have you could have at least made an attempt by pointing to the dumb shit from your own network whose Patreon was removed. You'd say, look, this this pile of garbage can't make any money on Patreon, and his Patreon was shut down over and over because he's a dumb pile of shit who, who harasses people over and over, including his own fans. By the way, you should maybe have a talk with him because some of his own fans feel really uncomfortable about him leaking their nude pictures to their parents. Maybe you should look into that, Maddox, because shit like this comes up in lawsuits when you raise lawsuits, and your network may be liable to other people who could be mandatorily joined through mandatory mandatory joinder of, of cross, uh, cross complaints. Like that... That's a possibility. Did you even think about the possibility that your network, your network, 
that you own and probably have not properly structured legally because you make bad decisions all the time, that your network might be liable for the actions of the dumbass on your network who routinely doxes people, who posts private information all the time, who likely violates federal law by posting nude pictures of his own fans on the web without their consent. Like, maybe you should look into the possibility of this shit coming up and the possibility of your network being in violation of New York law. What the fuck are you thinking bringing this lawsuit when you have such a goddamn liability? The only liability you could find on the internet because you're such a pile of trash these days that no one wants to associate with you. Your stupid podcast network has like one other guy who's a total liability and you keep supporting him even though he's likely in violation of laws all the time and now you're bringing a lawsuit where fucking discovery if it gets that far if it gets to discovery oh my god i hope i hope to god that dick's legal team runs your dumb network through the fucking dirt on discovery and finds every instance where you encouraged harassment and finds every instance where your fucking dumb piece of shit guy on your network encourages harassment or doxes people. I can provide documentation of it because I have it because people reached out to me for help from your piece of shit. Think about it, Maddox, you fucking dummy. <sighs> okay. I apologize. I'm getting worked up. <clears throat> Patreon actually has a term and metric it calls it uses called financially successful creators. Patreon has close to a million users on its platform. However, less than 50 creators earn over $150,000 per year, which is where Patreon makes a majority of its fees. Defendant Herrera is one of them. That's great. You had an entire fact section. You had an entire fucking fact section to establish that Patreon treated them differently, and you failed to. You failed to until now. In your cause of action, even allege this, but you had a fact section where you could show how they treated people differently, and you didn't, you stupid pile of shit. Likewise, Patreon failed to warn plaintiff Jane Doe about information it obtained from an outside source, namely from plaintiff Uzuyan and others about how third parties said, Do, Does Patreon have a relationship with Jane Doe? Do they? If they don't, they don't have a duty to warn her. And they can't fail to uh, fulfill that duty if they don't have it. About how third parties, such as defendants Herrera Coconos and thousands of their fans, are targeting, stalking, and harassing her and threaten to rape and kill her. Does Patreon even know who Jane Doe is? If she's not a content creator using their site, they don't know who she is. They can't warn her. Patreon's duty to warn plaintiff Jane Doe and they don't have a duty to warn you of anything. They don't have a duty to warn you of something that happens to you that you're alleging that they disagree with, by the way. They obviously disagree with because they haven't shut down Dick's Patreon yet. They don't have a duty to warn. <laughs> Under these circumstances would not require Patreon to remove any user content or otherwise uh, affect how it publishes or monitors such content. Wait, what? You're saying, okay, so their duty to warn would not require them to take down any of the content. I'm glad I'm glad that you admit that. That undermines that undermines the one hope that you had being a vindictive piece of shit that you are. And this lawsuit is fucking clear. And I hope, man, I hope that the New York judge gets wind of the fact that you're trying to do this to interfere with a lawful contract between Patreon and Dick because that's tortious interference, you dumb pile of shit. This lawsuit, being frivolous, might lend you to criminal and civil liability to Dick, and I fucking hope his attorneys rip you apart with whatever cut-rate attorney you hired to just sign this document who probably hasn't even read it, and I feel really sorry for that guy because he might get sanctioned with you. Further, 
Treating George the same as defendant Herrera. Both creators on the platform has nothing to do with content, only with how much money the respective creator generates. Are you alleging that they create that they treat you the same? Further, defendant Patreon had actual knowledge from an outside source of information about criminal activity. Who's the outside source? Is it's you are not an outside source. You have a contractual relationship with them. Who's the outside source? And did they disagree with the outside source, which they have the ability to do, and they don't have privity with the outside source. Sorry, privity is a legal term. Privity means a, a chain of contract, right? So, like, uh, they have privity with Maddox because uh, Maddox has a contract with Patreon by being a, a fucking abysmally producing creator that they probably hate because he's basically dead weight. But, um... Uh, they would they would maybe have privity with uh, like Maddox if he could ever possibly produce offspring, which he can't. By the way, does Patreon know you advocate killing babies, Maddox? Hmm, something to consider. Born babies, not like this isn't an abortion argument. This is born, but you've you specifically stated that babies should be born and then killed. I mean. Uh, we all thought it was satire at the time, but maybe it wasn't, right? Like, since you don't understand satire, I can't imagine that anything you've ever said is satire. So when you suggested that you should uh, have sex with a pregnant woman so that you're also having sex with the baby, like, should we infer that you're trying to create some sort of disgusting criminal sexual act with the most minor of minors? Or should we infer that you're making a comedic joke and, and doing satire? Because, again, you've, you've routinely taken satirical things and tried to make them into real things. Like a billboard that was never created. But, I mean, I'm digressing. Good luck on this, buddy. I think you've got a good, I think you've got a good case. Fourteenth cause of action. Fraud. Fraud against Patreon and Jordan Cope. Good fucking luck. <laughs> Fraud. What did they take from you, Maddox? What did they take? Did you pay Patreon? In addition to the foregoing outlined above. The foregoing and outlined above is redundant. Mr. Cope advised Plaintiff George that he would let him know that the trust and safety team's decision relative to his complaints and that he had forwarded all the information, blah, blah, blah. Are you saying he lied? Mr. Cope was not a member of the trust and safety team. Well, fucking no. That's why he'd have to forward it to them. Further, Mr. Cope derib... Der deliberately directed plaintiff to deal with him on all matters relative to his complaints as a point of contact for Patreon, not the trust and safety team. Right, because investigatory teams should not have contact with, with the parties that they're investigating. They need to remain neutral. They need to appear neutral. They need to have the appearance of neutrality. So you have a liaison between that team who's busy investigating shit all day and you, and that's Jordan Cope, a customer service rep. Nowhere are you going to be directly in charge with an investigatory or in contact with an investigatory team. That would that would put the investigated party at significant disadvantage. So if they contacted you, they'd similarly have to contact Dax, or else they're no longer neutral. You fucking dummy. They can't do what you're asking them to do. It would actually be worse. A worse system. Mr. Cope deliberately directed plaintiff to deal with him on all matters relative to his complaints as a point of contact and not the trust and safety team. Well, yes, that that is how corporate America works. Welcome to the fucking story. You don't talk with a fraud investigation team anywhere. You talk with some sort of customer service liaison whose job it is to collect facts, provide them to the investigatory team, who then investigates without your boring probably disruptive influence happening at all hours of the night because you're such an obsessive, vindictive pile of shit that you can't let anything go. If you would have let this go, it would go away. But you just can't because you're cripplingly disabled. Moreover, Patreon's trust and safety team does not disclose the results of any investigations, does not provide notifications regarding any complaints or reports. Fucking good. They shouldn't. It's not their job to give that to you. They don't owe you. Therefore, Mr. Cope made multiple material misrepresentations or omissions of fact to plaintiff or zoo. How? Relative to Patreon's practice? No. 
He said if he received news, he would tell you. He didn't receive news. He didn't tell you. It, you have to either allege that he received news and lied to you, and even then, he has no duty to disclose shit to you. He just decided to make a promise. Not even a promise. He decided to make a passing statement. I don't want to misrepresent what Mr. Cope said. He didn't make a material promise to you. He doesn't owe you a duty. He doesn't owe you jack and shit. Mr. Cope had knowledge of the said of the falsity of said facts. What fucking facts, you dummy? Mr. Cope misrepresented or omitted said facts with a fraudulent intent to induce reliance. Induce reliance? How did you rely on him? He didn't, you didn't. Okay. Again, law pause. Reliance. What Maddox is talking about is something called promissory estoppel. Promissory estoppel is an extremely obscure uh, mode of contract law. Wherein someone makes a promise. I promise to give you $15,000. And the that's not a contract, right? Like that does not create a contractual relationship. I promise to give you $15,000 if you come and pour a nice cement patio in my backyard. That's, a, a, that's two promises. You're promising to make the cement patio. I'm promising $15,000. Now we have a contract. Promissory estoppel is different. It's the idea where we don't have a contract, but I'm promising you a gift, a gift that you reasonably uh, expect to receive and that you then, as a reasonable person, make decisions based on the reasonable expectation of that promise. This is, this is way, way out in the woods, especially in this case. You're saying... You're saying that Mr. Cope promised you something and you relied on that promise to your economic detriment. You have to show a loss, George. You have to show a loss in reliance on the promise for the principles of promissory estoppel to come in. And a judge would have to deem that, one, it was reasonable for you to assume that it was reasonable for you to assume that this promise was valid and that the action you took detrimental to yourself based on said promises was reasonable. Good fucking luck, you moron. That's how you intend to induce reliance. You're using a promissory estoppel standard in a fraud case, which is stupid because you didn't pay Patreon any money based on whatever misrepresentations you're claiming they're, make, they're making. Even if we accept your argument, you didn't, you didn't do anything. You didn't give up a legal right or, any, or incur any economic burden. You fucking dummy. Plaintiff justifiably relied on your misrepresentations omissions to his detriment. What detriment? What detriment did you rely on them to if you were never going to be allowed access to the trust team, safety, trust and safety team, then Mr. Cope didn't misrepresent anything. He's your liaison. He's your point of contact. If you don't have a way to contact them, if that's not in Patreon's process, which you had the opportunity to allege and you didn't, if that's not there, you fucking lose. Just like on every other one of these goddamn points, you fucking lose because you're really goddamn bad at this. 15th cause of action, promissory estoppel against Patreon and Jordan Culp. I thought you were just misusing it in the fraud sense, but no, it turns out you're going to misuse it in its own sense. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Patreon, uh, I set forth more fully above. Mr. Cope and Patreon promised to do something relative to plaintiff's complaints. They didn't promise to do something. They promised, they promised to investigate. And you have no evidence that they didn't investigate. Did you ever fucking ask if they've conducted an investigation? And did they say no? Because that's evidence that they didn't do it. Did they? Did you do it and they said yes? And then you got to prove that they're lying. Good luck. Because all, all Patreon has to do here is show one email from Jordan Cope to the trust and safety team saying, Hey, you know what? Uh, can you take a look at this guy? That's it. They don't even have to show a response. God, you're... Ugh.
I'm going to need a sandwich after this. Patreon and or Mr. Cope as a reasonable person could foresee that his promises... <laughs> could foresee that his promise is that. Learn English. He or the trust and safety team would do something. You have no evidence that they did nothing. Doing something is really easy. Like, I can investigate... I can investigate your claims for you on behalf of Patreon, Maddox, based on what you've posted in here. Nothing violates the terms of service, you fucking dummy. And or would raise plaintiff's complaints at the trust and safety team's weekly meetings. How do you know they didn't? And, and how do you know they have weekly meetings? You could have established that in your facts section. This doesn't have foundation. And or to only deal with Mr. Cope as Patreon's point of conduct. Point of conduct. You mean contact. Proofread your 53-page legal document that you're going to send to someone who's supposed to read it critically. Proofread. Take one iota of professionalism and fucking proofread. And that he would notify plaintiff with any news or movement would induce the plaintiff's conduct of the kind which occurred in this case. What conduct did he induce? Like, what did you do? If, if the induction of conduct is you not doing anything, that's not inducing conduct. That's inducing non-conduct, which isn't a thing. Which isn't a thing at all. What conduct did he induce? What conduct? Maddox? Plaintiffs actually relied on Cope's promise to do something. That's fine. You can rely on it, which resulted in a substantial change in plaintiff's position. What change? You had a fact section to allege this, and you didn't, as it strung plaintiffs along for months on end without any resolution. So what was your other course of action? You had a fact section to allege what you would have done, and you didn't. This is your sworn oath and affidavit, you Fucking dummy. You could have said anything. Sixteenth cause of action. Deceptive trade practices and acts. You already have this. Why didn't you include Patreon and Jordan Cope under New York statute? But New York... Mm, as set forth more fully above, you... Defendants' Patreon and Cope's representations or practices were deceptive and likely to mislead consumers acting reasonably. What representations or practices were deceptive? This is in regards to advertising under the statute. Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can find it again. Acts or practices stated to be unlawful. He may bring an action in the name. What act or practice was unlawful, Maddox? That's all you have to do is just even allege an act or practice that was unlawful. Or misrepresenting or deceptive. Allege one. By the way, if I dismiss you, even if I outright dismiss you as a customer service rep and say, we'll look into that, and that means that I will dismiss this as soon as you hang up the phone because I think you're full of shit, that's not a deceptive act. That's not. That Mr. Cope uh, pro promised to provide, and he didn't promise anything. He said he would forward your information to the trust and safety team. But even if we take that as a promise, you have to show that he didn't do it. Like maybe an admission by email from him like, yeah, I, I actually didn't ever do this. That would help. But you don't have that, do you, you fucking moron? Engage in deceptive practices or acts with knowledge of the deception. Directly participate in a deceptive scheme against plaintiff. You had a fact section. Yeah, but your complaint your cause of action section should link facts from your fact section to a cause of action to a law to a legal standard and what you should do what you should do is your lawyer should go through case law in new york 
should go through case law and statutes and notes of decisions. This is all on Westlaw, which your lawyer, I assume, would have something like Westlaw or Lexis or something. He should go through every fucking cause of action you're raising, every one of them. He should find the standard for that cause of action. He should find the standard. There's a test somewhere that the court has developed to determine if these claims are valid. He should find the test and he should attach a specific fact to each element of the test for each cause of action. You did it for zero causes of action because either you who wrote this is a moron and not a lawyer, obviously, even though you probably fancy yourself in your stupid hubris to have expertise in law, you have expertise in bullshit because I've heard you talk about... Uh, I've heard you talk about fair use before and you're fucking wrong on that. You're wrong on just about every goddamn thing you've ever dabbled in. It's embarrassing, Maddox. It's embarrassing. But I know you fancy yourself a lawyer. You're not. That's why you're getting blown out in court left and right. And why you're going to get blown out again. But your lawyer, at least doing his professional duty should have fucking reviewed this and he should have gone through each point of action and done just the rudimentary amount of research to link the facts to the elements of the cause of action but I bet he didn't because I bet you can't pay him any money because you're broke because you can't make a good business decision you fucking moron <sighs> Jesus Christ that's the end of this stupid document and uh, now as promised I want to I want to address one thing um, brought up by uh, a fellow Dick Show listener. His name is Matt. I'm not going to reveal his last name because that's illegal in New York, according to Maddox. Anyway, Matt asked me uh, on on Facebook, uh, does does this, and he's referencing a Patreon terms of service provision, which I'll read to you in whole in just a second. It says, does this mean the motion filed against Patreon New York is null and void? So, uh, Patreon section governing law. Any disputes with us must be resolved in San Francisco under California law. Then it says, California law, excluding its conflict of law provisions, governs these terms and all other Patreon policies. If a lawsuit does arise, both parties consent to the exclusive jurisdiction and venue of the courts located in San Francisco, California. Matt asked if that would uh, preclude George from bringing the lawsuit against Patreon in New York. My immediate answer is no. It doesn't preclude anything because, um, you know, choice of law provision has to be decided by the court. It may, it may preclude George from bringing a uh, suit against Patreon in New York. And if it does, it's because of the contractual relationship George has with Patreon. But I don't want to overinflate uh, the contractual relationship like this. And, and I'm going to speak in Maddox's favor, even though... Maddox, you're fucking wrong. You should have brought this in L.A. And I hope that you're bringing it in New York gets dismissed with prejudice. And I hope that that allows an issue preclusion argument in California. I'm not an expert by any means in that. But I fucking hope it does. I hope that when this gets dismissed in New York for improper venue and gets dismissed with prejudice, that then it's issue precluded in California. God, that would make me happy. Oh. Whew. the lawyers that are opposed to you are gonna have a fucking field day lube up george anyway um sorry so uh, choice of law provisions are an argument they're evidence and they can be overcome uh, that's the ultimate reason i say no it doesn't automatically preclude the suit um, New York could determine that the choice of law provision uh, restricting it to San Francisco, California is is not valid for any number of reasons. One, they could decide that um, that these causes of action, these torts are outside the terms of the contract uh, between the two parties and that the acts arising here have nothing to do with the contract between George and Patreon such that he never agreed to raise uh, any any dispute with Patreon in California in regards to these causes of action because they're not related to his contract with Patreon. Patreon has a very strong argument, though, that as they provided a customer liaison to George, who's a Patreon content creator, 
that that puts him under the terms of this provision and that in in raising the lawsuit in New York, um, he's violating his contract and that the lawsuit is not valid. Patreon has a very strong argument there because George has a relationship with him, but I don't want to overplay the value of that argument. It is an argument. And what makes matters worse for Patreon is this is what we call a contract of adhesion, right? This is an online terms of service that you implicitly agree to by clicking agree, whether you read it or not. And these, these uh, adhesion contracts can't be negotiated. Um, like I can't call Patreon and line out that provision. So that gives less weight to it overall. To have the strongest provision of a contract, you have to have two parties who have the ability to negotiate every single element of that contract. Any sort of form that you're agreeing to is an adhesion contract. And um, just a, a side note, and a, a boring legal side note, I think adhesion contracts are really about to come into a lot of fire because we have uh, shit like the Delta uh, garbage where, not Delta, United Airlines, where they're, where they're taking people off of, of plane flights and they're justifying it through an online contract that you agree to by purchasing a ticket, even though that shit isn't on your ticket and you don't have a chance to negotiate it with. Like, you have to agree to buy the ticket. For Patreon, to do business with Patreon, you have to agree to their terms of service. You can't negotiate any specific part of it. Therefore, it's not the strongest contract available. So I don't want to say that uh, Maddox is definitely hosed out of his contract due to this one random term of service on Patreon. That's not how the law works. Um, and it shouldn't be. That would be a bad method of law, right? Because then technically you can go buy something at Walmart and they could say on their receipt that you're agreeing to some term of service on the PDF, which absolves them from product liability or something stupid. Uh, we don't want any of that. But um, just going through and saying that this provides a good argument for Patreon to have the, the suit dismissed for improper venue. Although the New York court, what the New York court could do is they could accept the case and they could agree to applying California law under the terms of the contract. Now, I know it says in San Francisco, but the court could determine that provision is too restrictive, but providing California law is not too restrictive kind of a weird hazy area uh moral of the story is courts can kind of do whatever the hell they want because they're courts and and you can always appeal it and waste your own time and money um but uh hopefully matt that answers your question and is thorough enough for you if not hit me up on uh and on facebook and i can explain it a little more in depth but that should provide just kind of a basic explanation so i've gone through the whole thing uh the one final thing is plaintiff's Plaintiff's apostrophe, this is on the last page, signed by the lawyer. Plaintiff's apostrophe, hereby demand a trial by jury on all issues so triable. Are you fucking kidding me? Good luck. Good luck, guys. I, I, I don't know if you'll get that jury trial. Uh, might have to do with what the defendants suggest, and... I think a bench trial is probably more appropriate due to the inflammatory nature of, of the claims that you're making, the unsupported claims that you're making, where you're alleging rape and death threats, yet not providing a single goddamn example of them. But I, I am not Dick's attorney. I have never represented myself as Dick's attorney or anyone named in this lawsuit. I am not licensed to practice in the state of New York. Nothing I say can be legal advice. I think all of you knew that. Uh, this is just me getting drunk and uh, shredding some really fucking bad arguments, some piss poor construction of a legal document. This is embarrassing. It's embarrassing in its construction. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. This is, you know, this is entertaining for me. Uh, and I hope me screaming at a computer is entertaining for you. And I'm going to try and end this video before I get another fucking virus on my computer researching this shit. So, uh, cheers. Remember, if you're in Minnesota, hit me up, Ricada Law. Uh, even if you don't have a lawsuit, if you're in uh, central Minnesota, you want to hang out, get a drink or something, I'm game, man. Uh, we, can, we can talk about this bullshit all day. Uh, signing off, guys. Have a good night.